Tufiwe tena. Amen. Amen indeed. Quickly we read together the memory verse cited. First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse reading from verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 4 and we'll read from verse 9. Now, I would love to read this passage in different versions of the Bible so we clearly understand what it's talking about. From verse 9, I'm reading from the New King James Version. From verse 9, the Bible says, For I think that God has displayed us, the apostles, last as men condemned to death. For we have been made a spectacle to the world, both to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are distinguished, but we are dishonored. To the present hour, verse 11, to the present hour, we both hunger and thirst. And we are poorly clothed and beaten and homeless. Verse 12 says, but, And we labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we endure. Being defamed, we entreat. We have been made as the filthy of the world. The offscoring of all things until now. Ends the King James. Let me read the same passage in another version of the Bible called the New Living Translation. There the Bible says, Instead, I sometimes think that God has put us apostles on display like prisoners of war at the end of a victor's parade condemned to die. We have become a spectacle to the world, to people and to angels alike. Our dedication to Christ makes us look like fools. But you claim to be so wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are powerful. You are honored, but we are ridiculed. Even now we go hungry and thirst. And we don't have enough clothes to keep warm. We are often beaten and have no home. We work wearily with our own hands to earn our living. We bless those who curse us. We are patient with those who abuse us. Yet, we are treated like the world's garbage. Like everybody's trash. Right up to the present moment. The same passage, we read it in another version called the Message Bible. It reads, It seems to me that God has put us who bear his message on a stage in a theater in which no one wants to buy a ticket. Let me read that again. Verse 9, it seems to me that God has put us who bear his message on stage in a theater in which no one wants to buy a ticket. We are something, we are something everyone stands around and stares at, like an accident in the street. We are the Messiah's misfits. We are the Messiah's misfits. You might be sure of yourselves, but we live in the midst of frailties and uncertainties. You might be well thought of by others, but we are most kicked, but we are mostly kicked around. Much of the time we don't have enough to eat. We wear patched and threadbare clothes. 
we get doors slammed in our faces. And we pick up old jobs, old jobs, anywhere we can to eke out a living. When they call us names, we say, God bless you. When they spread rumors about us, we put in good word for them. We are treated like garbage. The leftovers that nobody wants. And it's not getting any better. Our message is under the title, Behave. With an exclamation mark at the end. Behave. Shall we pray? Eternal and loving Father in heaven. We have come before you this evening one more time. We go through your word. And we know you have a word for each one of us that is gathered here. We ask Lord that you may give us that word. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Obviously, these are words of Paul. One of the men that suffered the most in the Bible. Through to the very end. When you read the book of Second Timothy, Paul gives us a synopsis of some of the things that he went through for the sake of the gospel or as an apostle or as a messenger of the gospel. Second Timothy writes to young Timothy, entreating him to espouse the things that he had learned from Paul, pleading with him that he should hold fast what he had learned from the great apostle. Why does Paul say so? Paul is now a prisoner in Rome, buried somewhere in some dark dungeon in Rome, never to come out alive. And one commentator says it is not possible to read spiritually the second epistle to Timothy without your eyes tearing as you read the suffering st stories that Paul went through for the sake of the gospel. Beaten and scourged, thrown into different prison, moving from one procurator to another, pleading for his case to be heard, but nobody wanted to hear his case, and it kept getting worse and worse. Writing from a prison, dungeon, he, he can tell, he can say to young Timothy, I have fought a good fight. He writes to young Timothy, Paul, this time around, he has no hope of ever coming out of prison. He knows his story has come to an end. Now he can write to the young man who, has, who must take over the mantle of the gospel and he says to him, Timoth, I have fought a good fight. My end has come. Now what awaits me is a crown that shall be given not just to me, but even to others who will fight the way I fought. In First Chronicle, in First Corinthians, Paul then says to the church in Corinth, he says, "For I think that God has displayed us, the apostles, last as men that have been appointed to death. We have been made a spectacle to the world, to the angels." And to mankind alike. We are reviled. We are insulted. But we are not to insult back. We simply bless. We don't have enough to feed or fend for ourselves. We scrounge from one meal to the next. The message Bible says we wear pasty clothes. We are treated like the last garbage. Of this world that nobody wants to be associated with. Paul says, I think those of us that are his messengers have been displayed last. 
as apostles, we have been displayed last as men appointed to die. We have been made a spectacle of the world, both to angels and to the men. Paul continues to say, we are fools for Christ's sake. But you are wise in Christ. He says, we are weak, but you are strong. You are distinguished, but we are dishonored. To the present hour, we hunger and we thirst, and we are poorly clothed. We are beaten and homeless. We labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, being ridiculed, being insulted. Yet we don't insult back. We don't ridicule back. It's not tit for tat. We don't pay back those that pay us wrongly. When they do what they do to us, what is the response we give? Paul says, we bless. They revile, they ridicule, we bless. So he says, uh, he says we are being persecuted. Yet in the midst of persecutions, we endure. We don't give up. He says, we are being defamed. Rumors are spreading about us. Yet, we entreat. We have been made as the filthy, or as the message version says, we have been made the garbage of the world. The offscoring of all things until now. We have been made ridiculed, insulted, reviled, persecuted. Yet we don't pay back our persecutors as the world would want to pay them back. Yet we bless, we entreat, we endure, we remain calm in calmless situations. Paul says, I think from my experiences, Paul says, from my experiences, I think those of us that are his messengers, those of us that are his apostles, those of us that follow him and preach this gospel that he gave to us, he says, I think God has displayed us last as apostles. He has displayed us last as men appointed to die. Are we together? Those of us that are apostles, Paul says, I think he has displayed us last. Other versions say, he has exhibited us last as men appointed to die. Now, Paul, now, one thing, there was something that was happening at the time that made Paul write the way he wrote. Are we together, Elder? There was something that Paul was relating with for him to pen down these words that we have come to know. Now, one thing I need for you to appreciate about the Bible is that in as much as the Bible was written for us, it was not written to us. I don't know if that makes sense. In as much as the Bible was written for us, it was not written to us. So for you to understand the Bible in context, understand the context in which it was written. Every text written out of context is a pretext. That is why your people pick a verse from the Bible. It says the Bible says, let us drink and be merry for tomorrow we die. So they go drinking like a fish and tomorrow they die out of liver complications. They say we read it from the Bible. You read it out of context. So every text you read out of context becomes a pretext. So one thing we need to appreciate is that in as much as the Bible was written for us who are living today, it was not written to us. It was written to a particular audience. Everything you have in the Bible was written to a particular audience. It had its own interpretation then. It has its own interpretation today. Paul says, I think us who are apostles, I think God has displayed us last as men 
and women appointed to die. What was happening? The Roman officials in the first century, the Roman officials took amusement, entertainment from the execution of its prisoners, largely of whom were Christians. Follow me closely. The Romans entertained themselves from the execution of prisoners, especially those who were appointed to die. Those who were on death row. Their killing was a spectacle. It was something to watch. It was something to entertain themselves over. The death of a prisoner, one condemned to die, was an amusement thing that people would come and watch as one who is condemned is being killed. How would they do it? They threw the condemned into an arena. Once they threw them in, they let loose the wild beasts, the lions, the tigers, the bears, and the elephants, and they let them wrestle with a person until that particular person had died. Now, they would do it in the morning, they would do it in the afternoon. Now, those who were thrown into the arena in the morning were given equipment or armor to fight against those beasts. So if one was thrown, was to be thrown in the morning, those would not largely be death row prisoners who would be thrown into the arena in the morning. They would be given armor to fight back at the beast as the beast was attacking the person. So those who went in in the morning would go in at least with protective gear to fight against the beast. But those for whom it was guaranteed that come what may, they must die. They were stripped naked. Not given nothing to wear. Not given any equipment to fight with. Those came in the afternoon. Mm. They were thrown in the arena in the afternoon. Then the animals were let loose. And the officials would sit comfortably. Watching a man turn, being torn to pieces. And they drew their entertainment from there. As men were being killed. And we know that was one of the most dangerous periods to be a Christian. That is where the persecutions on the church were so ferocious and fierce. And Paul is writing to the church in Corinth. Relating with his personal experiences. The things he had gone through. Are we together, Elder? The things he had personally gone through. The shipwrecks, being scolded and beaten, being reviled, being ridiculed, left to die. Now he's in a prison. Never to come out. He writes to the church in Corinth and says, from my experience, I think we that are apostles, we that are messengers, God has displayed us in a theater. We have been made a what? A spectacle to the world. Men condemned to die. And he says, I think we that are apostles, we have been appointed last. Why last? Because those to be killed, come what may, would be thrown into the arena last. Late in the afternoon, because they will not survive. Once they are killed, maimed, and tortured by animals. That would be the end of the entertainment for that day. And Paul relates what was happening then to what happens to him as an apostle. He says, we that are apostles have been appointed last as men condemned to die. And that was the end result of Paul's story. It ended the same way he prophesied it would end. He died the miserable death. But you know, the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us, Romans, that should be 8 verse 18. That should be Romans 8 verse 18. He says, Paul writing again to the church in Rome, he says, for I consider that the present suffering cannot be equated to the glory that shall be revealed in us. For I consider the things I'm going through 
weightless. They have no matter in them. They are not as weighty as the glory that shall be revealed in us ultimately. What I'm going through is nothing. I may suffer now. I will not suffer forever. I may be deprived now. I won't be deprived forever. I may be sick now. I won't be sick forever. And you may oppress me now, but I won't be oppressed forever. One day, the Son of Man will come. One day, the tears on my eyes will be faced off, will be wiped out, never to cry again. One day, the disease in my body will be no more, never to be sick again. One day, I'll wake up, never to go to bed again because of tablets I took in the morning to sustain me. One day, I'll wake up and I'll never sleep and I'll never die again. Paul says, why consider that the present suffering is nothing compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. He says in the passage that we read, he says, for I think that God has appointed us last as apostles, as men appointed to death. He then says in the latter part of verse 9, he says, we have been made a what? A spectacle. <laughs> We have been made a what? A spectacle to the world. Not just to the world, but also to men. Not just to men, but even to angels. We have been made a spectacle. Now, <laughs> you will you'll be glad to know that the word that is translated spectacle in English comes from a Greek word theatron, from which we have the English word theater. What you have as a spectacle in your English versions, when you read that passage in Greek, it's a theatron from which we have our word in English as theater. So in other words, Paul says, we that are apostles and men that have been appointed to act in a theater. When you are in a theater, you do not act. When you are in a movie, you do not act as you feel like acting. You act as a movie director wants you to act. You didn't hear me. <laughs> Listen. When you are in a theater, when you are in a movie, you have been shortlisted to perform in a movie. You don't act as you want. There is a script that is written down, given to you. You study it and you only do or say the things that have been said to you to say. I don't know if the church is with me. Listen. The life of a Christian is not life until the Christ in the way the Christian becomes manifest in the Christian. In other words, you do not live the way you want. You do not walk the way you want. You do not talk the way you want. You do not dress the way you want. You do not act or respond the way you want. You act, respond, and do all things according to how Christ wants you to respond. In other words, when you enlist into Christianity, you have enlisted to be lifeless so you can have the life of Christ. You are surrendering your life to him. And he will do what he wants to do with you without you disputing or going contrary to what he wants. In other words, <laughs> you have been made into a performer in a theater. And people will come and watch. As they watch how you respond to circumstances, how you live your life, they learn about Christ, not about you. Let me bring it home. There are some of us who are suffering undeservingly. You think you are suffering undeservingly. It is deserving because you enlisted for it. There are things that are happening to you that you think should never have been happening to you. They are happening because you enlisted to be a performer in Christ's school of drama. And so you only behave as Christ wants you to behave. So what are we saying? When trouble comes, when trouble happens in your life, behave. You didn't hear what I said. When trouble comes, behave. 
the world. Men, angels are watching. You have been made into a spectacle. You are an actor in a movie, in a theater, where people come as we are, and they are watching how you respond to situations. And from the way you respond, they will either know Christ, or they will choose not to have nothing to do with Christ. From the way you behave, in every circumstance and every situation, people will desire to have something to do with Christ, or to have nothing to do with Christ. And so, in every situation we find ourselves in, Christ expects us to behave. You are an ambassador, not of Kenya. You are an ambassador, not of the Luo people. You are an ambassador, not of the Kisi. You are an ambassador, not of the Kikuyu. You do not come and respond the way a Kikuyu or a Luo or whoever responds. You respond the way Christ is supposed to respond to circumstances. You don't come here and tell us, we the Luo people, we are what? To hell with that. You are a Christian. Behave as the Christian is supposed to behave. When you accept Christ and go into the baptism of the water, as you come out there, you have lost your identity. The identity that must identify you is the identity of Christ. So in every situation, whether provoked or otherwise, behave. If you feel like you can't behave, have nothing to do with Christ. God has enough soldiers in his army. To represent himself correctly. If you are still in the habit of misrepresenting him, have nothing to do with him. Whatever happens, say whatever happens to you, Christ expects a certain behavior, a certain response from you. He has men and women that are ready to represent him. If you feel you are not ready to respond to issues, to represent him fully and totally and comprehensively, I beg you in the name of God. Have nothing to do with him. Stop sending mixed signals. Today you are at church. The other day you are responding as if you have nothing to do with church. You are provoked away from church premises and you lash out insults as if you and the devil sat in the same womb at the same time and came out as Siamese twins. The people lash out rumors about you and you retort and respond with worse responses than the devil himself would do. Listen, child of God, if a child of God behave as a child of God. Paul further tells us in Romans, Romans chapter 2, verse 24, and he says, the name of God is blasphemed among heathens because of you. Read that passage. God has no capacity to misrepresent himself. He says the name of God is blasphemed, brought into disrepute among the heathen. Why? Because of you that are Christians, yet live Christless lives. Christless lives. To those of us that have been appointed apostles, those of us that are his messengers, those of us called to represent him, should and must behave in a certain way. When circumstances, even when death happens in your home, you are not to mourn as a man or woman who is hopeless. You are to mourn as a person who has hope. we together. Even when you are dismissed from your workplace unfairly, unfairly dismissed, you know we did not do the things they accused you of having done. You do not fight back as a world fight, because you know, the Lord maybe, he has chosen you to be an epitome of righteousness. He has lifted you up and put you on a theater where others, others who are watching, will watch as events unfold in your life. You have to behave as Christ expects you to behave. Are you listening tonight? If you can't represent Christ in totality, I beg you in the name of God, have nothing to do with him. Christianity is not for the faint-hearted. 
It's not for the faint-hearted. Because there are things you know you do not deserve that you'll have to go through. And certainly Christ will bring them over to happen to you. He has chosen you. You are a spectacle. You are in the theater. And you are to behave as Christ expects you to behave. Are we still together? There are things that will happen to you. Paul says, we that are apostles, we that are messengers of God, I think we have been appointed last. As men appointed to die. And we have been made a spectacle to the world. The same way the condemned prisoners and Christians would be killed in the Roman times of dominance. It is the same thing that ha is happening to us Christians today. When stuff happens to a child of God, there is a world that is watching. And you are to represent Christ in every situation. You are to represent Christ in every crisis. You are to behave as Christ would behave. How does, you see, how does Christ behave? Christ is one who is slapped by a hand he made. The hand he made is the one that comes to smash him on the face. He can, listen, he can speak a word. That hand dries up instantly together with whoever is carrying it. But Jesus withholds his strength. Christ is as one that is nailed to a wood. A wood he spoke into existence himself. The materials he spoke into existence to make easy the life of man are the materials being used to fix Christ. What does he do? He obeys. When he could have called 10,000 angels to come and smash everybody who was surrounding him, Christ withholds his power because he knew that this path that I'm writing down, this story I'm writing down, somebody in Kenya must walk through this story. And they too must respond as I have responded. He behaved. I entreat you now. Behave. When hell happens in your home, behave. Do not live life as if you are people that, are, that do not believe. That are unbelievers. Christ expects a certain standard from you. He expects certain words never to come out of the mouth of a Christian. He expects certain conducts never to be done by Christians. Even in the midst of highest, the highest form of provocation, he, there's a certain standard that Christ expects us to espouse and to uphold. Why? Because we are Christians. In case you did not know, the word Christians came as a nickname. It was not an official name given to the movement that Christ left. It came as a nickname in Antioch because the people that were nicknamed that way were behaving exactly the same way the owner of the name behaved. They were reviled, they were insulted, they were ridiculed, they were starved, but they fought back as if they had no strength, as if they had no energy. And so they started calling them, they look like Christ. They behave like Christ. And that's how come the name was coined Christians. So have nothing to do with Christianity if you cannot behave like the Christ in the word Christianity. If you are not serious to espouse and uphold his teachings and everything he espouses and he stood for, if you are not ready to uphold it to the very bitter end, even to the point of death, if you are not ready to get to the bitter end, Nahomba, I beg you in the name of God, have nothing to do with Christianity. Because you that are here becomes the representative. You become an epitome of Christianity to the rest of the world. I, I'm telling you, you that are here, you are the representatives of Christ. To this world. If the world can't see Christ in you. They will not see Christ in himself. If you that are called elders. You that are called deacons. You that are called uh, senior youth leaders. And whatever your titles are. Cannot depict Christ in your demeanor. 
in your conduct, in your eating habits, in your dress code, in your work ethics. If you can't depict Christ, have nothing to do with Christ. Paul perfectly tells us the name of Christ is defamed among heathens because of you. If you are not ready to represent Christ in all forms of Christianity, have nothing to do with him. Are we together? But those of us, please you can come, I'm done. There's nothing more to say. But those of us that call ourselves Christians, when circumstances and situations happen to us, I beg you in the name of God, behave.